Good morning students, uh, welcome to yet another lecture of simulation of business systems course and uh, we have been in this course we are more than half the way through and we have been studying the importance of simulation, why simulation is necessary and how simulation helps in solving complex open ended problems and why this is kind of like the last resort to study things that are extremely complex and cannot be modeled using physical or mathematical models and uh, still uh, also how does it allows to model the uncertainty and variability of the system and it also allows us to model the time dependent behavior of the system for a long time. And we also seen uh, the important aspects of simulation, the important nuts and bolts of simulation and we have see worked on a simulation by hand also. We looked into another form of simulation called Monte Carlo simulation where the time is not there but the random behavior, the variability of the system is being studied the uncertainty and variability. Then we looked at uh, started looking into what is probability in statistics and why probability in statistics is important uh, for uh, simulation and uh, other aspects to it. And I also gave you a brief idea of what ARENA is and ARENA is a software that can be used to do system like simulation. And we have been uh, looking into a manufacturing system or a production system mostly and uh, uh, one of the ways we were looking into was uh, what happened when a factory where there is only one machine available. But you know in real life there is very rarely there are factories with one machine. Uh, there are but they are very small and very very small machines like somebody having one lathe or one drilling machine or something like that. Usually they will have two or more machines doing a small part or doing a small job and that job will go to somebody else who has a much larger facility and that person will uh, be producing more similar parts like that, he will join together to make a more complex parts and then finally it will become a bigger complex part. A classic example of this is like looking at how the gearbox is getting manufactured. So many of the people with a single hobbing machine which actually cuts the gear, they cut, they make different type of gear wheels. Below that there are foundries, small scale foundries which actually forges that blanks from which the gear is, gear wheels are cut. Then these blanks are bought by these people, they cut the uh, gear, gear wheels or the teeth according to the uh, hobbing machine, use on using the hobbing machine as per the size and then these teeth are procured in bulk by a guy who is assembling a gearbox and where he will have another bigger person who is making a gearbox casing which is casted out of bigger foundry maybe. Then all of these things somebody will be making the shaft and other things and then the gears will be mated with the shaft, uh, assembly is done and then finally the gearbox is made and these gearbox are procured by automotive manufacturers and these gearboxes gets assembled onto the automotives that they are producing. So this is how the production system, the uh, top down chain of the production system works. Uh, on the top where is the vehicle assembler is there, then below that there is subcomponent manufacturer from the manufacturer, it goes down all the way down to the person who makes the uh, first nut and bolt from there this kind of aggregates all the way up. So today what we are going to do is we are going to see arena again and we are going to see in a system where there is more than one machine is present. Okay. So we will try to do a scenario where there is multiple machines are present and how the presence of one machine result influences the presence of other. And these are the kind of systems where we call about it as tandem queues because where the queue from one machine, the output of one machine becomes the input of the another machine. Okay. So we are thinking about making a scenario or creating a scenario, a simple scenario where there is multiple machines, two machines arranged in sequence where uh, uh, two uh, or we can think about two services also. Let us think about two services today because you are looking at machines or we will, we can change it in any way, okay. machine or services, it does not matter. Okay. So first we will see how the system is uh, uh, without any variability and then we will slowly introduce the variability and then we will get into the concept of replications today, what is replication and why replication is important and possibly I will try to show you the half width today. And the theory behind half width, why is how is half width calculated? That aspect I will get back to you in the later class. Okay. So with that, if I if you pay attention to the computer screen that we have, um, 
where we are presenting about the how the arena is opened. I think uh, all of you know how it is opened. Once you download and install arena, it comes under the all programs and you scroll down this, you will get to see Rockwell software, here it is and then there is a link under Rockwell software called as arena, you click arena and then the links comes up and there is this input analyzer, output analyzer and process analyzer which I promise to you guys that I will uh, teach you later which I will do when, uh, depending upon the time. But let us first look into arena now and here is uh, you click arena, it opens up and it comes up with the Rockwell automation. It takes a little bit of time because it needs to verify the license. Uh, unlicensed, but all the examples that I will be demonstrating in the class can also be run on the unlicensed version or the free edition, the evaluation version of arena that is ava made available by the uh, software, uh, the company. So once you come in, then you get uh, different of these uh, two project bars. As I said earlier, the toolbar, the file, edit, all those options are right here. And then the, uh, you know, saving, running of the model and all those aspects are right here. And here is the major uh, modules of Arena, sub module or uh, the major process modules of Arena. So, there is, we are now looking at the packaging, but we want to start with the basic processes where we had a create, dispose, process and stuff like that, okay. And uh, so, now let me show you a model. So, we go to the basic process and then we were trying to make a uh, system in this regard. So, the model that we are trying to build here today is, uh, uh, is a, is a the two machine model. So, as I said earlier, we start with the create and when you click on this, you can see in the bottom bar, the details of the module that you are clicking shows up here, you know, what you need to do and those kind of things all of them shows the here. So, we click the create and drag and drop it into this place and let me zoom it up slightly bigger so that you guys can see this better. Okay. I hope it is visible, hopefully we make it 100 percent so that you can see. Okay. So, it says the create one is basically put right here and uh, we are going to oh, change the name of it. So, one way is to change it right here or other option is double click on this and you get a dialog box opens up. So, I am going to say that parts arrival. So, the create module says the parts arrival and the entity type I am going to change it as part okay. and I am going to say time between arrival is going to make it as constant okay. and I am going to say in every 10 minutes a part arrives, there is no variability in the system. Absolutely no variability, just constant time between arrival is 10 minutes and one entity will arrive at this time and arrivals are infinite and first entity will arrive at 0, 0.0, okay. So, the parts arrival, whatever I changed, I made the changes, you can see that they are immediately shown right here, okay. Then uh, I know that I know how to make a single machine model, so I will start with the single machine model to begin with. Then I drag, click the process, I drag it here, okay. So, this is process 1. So, let me say it as the, the name of the process as drilling process, okay. And this is a standard process as it is not a sub model. And remember, we are not going, we are going to make it as a cease delay release uh, instead of anything else because you have a resource associated with it. The minute you click the cease delay re uh, del release, the resources shows up. And I have to add a resource. So, I am going to add a resource called as a drilling machine. Drilling machine is the resource and there is one unit of the drilling machine available right here and I hit OK. So, the resource name is shown up in the list. There is a resource called drilling machine with one unit of it is associated with this. And I am going to make it as a constant and the time as minutes and I am going to say that the time is 8 minutes, it takes 8 minutes to drill a uh, hole, okay. And I have to click the report statistics to ensure that statistics of the thing is collected. Hit OK. So, I have a drilling process and I have a queue here and I click this and I click the queue, it will show you the drilling process queue. It is first in first out and you are collecting the statistics of the queue, okay. And then I will take the dispose, drag and drop it right here, okay, alright. And I say, uh, parts leave, okay. 
and I am recording the statistics of the entity. So, parts arrival, it goes to drilling process, parts leave. So, this is our single simple single machine system that we talked about in the earlier class because people had doubts on this. So, that is why I am again showing this to you and you know that the parts arrive one in every 10 minutes and I am able to drill a hole once in every 8 minutes. Uh, I, I, it takes me 8 minutes to drill the hole, it parts arrives in 10 minutes and the parts leave and there is no variability in the system and I connect them to simulate the flow of that. And then if I run this, ideally I should not be seeing any queuing, okay. there should be no queue because it will take me lesser time to drill the hole compared to the arrival. So, I go to run and I go to the setup and I go to replication parameters, uh, today's date is correct, number of replication is 1 and replication warm up period I change the time to minutes, time units I also change it to minute, replication length is infinite, I am going to change it into let us say. Uh, a one shift is uh, 480 minutes. So, we are running it for 8 hour time period, 24 hours per day and basic time units as minutes and we apply and hit ok and what we do is we run the simulation. Okay. So, we run this and you can see that there is the simulation is completed, you like to see the results and yes it is showing the results, uh, please hold for until the report is generated it takes a little bit time. So, there are 48 entities that were processed. So, if you click the entity, it will show the the, the average time is 8 minutes, okay. minimum value, maximum value is 8 minutes, there is absolutely no variability okay. and the total time, uh, the number of the parts that came in, 49 came in, 48 was out, 1 was still left on the machine when the simulation got stopped and if you look at the queue, the queue length is 0. So, average nobody was in the queue, there is the minimum time is 0, maximum time is 0. So, there is no one ever waited in the queue. Okay. So, this kind of tells me that yes, my system logic is working. So, this calculation and if you look at the resource, it should be utilized 80 percent of the time. So, the average instantaneous utilization or scheduled utilization of drilling machine is 0.8 which is 80 percent. If you multiply it by 100, you will see that the machine was used 80 percent of the time because the service, the time taken to drill a hole is 8 minutes and time taken for the arrival is 10 minutes. So, if you look at the ratio of it is 80 percent. So, you get exactly this planned utilization. So, you can check again as a theoretical system. This process that I just did now to ensure that the model is doing what it is supposed to do is called as um, ver verification okay. and also checking that the output of the model matches with the uh, expected output is called as the validation. Okay. So, verification validation is being done. So, then I think okay, fine I am okay with that. If that is the case then I will go back to the model and I can modify this model to ensure that I can add one more part into this. So, what I will do is I will slightly move this here and there so that I can make a little bit of space. Uh, so, you kind of know what I am doing. Okay. Parts arrive and the parts leave is moved slightly here backwards okay. and I am going to add one more process. So, I click this and I hit the delete button. Okay. So, the minute I delete this what happens is that connection is gone away and I am going to do add one more process in addition to this. So, I click this and I drag it right here there is this auto connect nonsense that comes up I delete this. Okay. Let me see whether this works without the auto connect okay. drag and drop. So, ideally it will do something like this, I move it right in between this okay, and I change it into milling process okay. and this is a standard again. The logic is cease delay release okay, which means it will immediately and remember we are not playing around with the priority of the system at this point. The reason we are not playing with the priority of the system is because uh, all the queues are first in first out, whoever is coming in uh, will come leave at the uh, first chance. So, now what we do is we click the add resource and we are going to put in a resource here which we are call it as the milling machine. Okay. So, there is a drilling and then there is a milling and there is one unit of a milling machine. Okay. And again we make it as a constant time units as minutes, it is a value added process and I am making the value of this as let us say 5. Okay. I hit ok, so 5 time units 
and the drilling I double click and I change this time to 5 ok. So, that my arrival is 1 in every 10 minutes and both of these guys are 5 minutes and 5 minutes to process. So, ideally I should not see any queue and I should see two machines utilized 50 percent of the time. Okay. Once I do that the parts leave they remain exactly the same and I added a new process in between and then all I need to do is I need to connect them to show the flow of the logic ok. So, I click here from drilling it goes to milling. So, the arena understands that now after the drilling process is over the part will go from the drilling process to the milling process. Once the milling process is over then I click it and click it this way it tells that after the milling the parts will leave the system ok. So, I have done this now and so if you look into this now you can see that in the basic processes you see there is two processes the drilling process and the milling process and if you click the queue here you can see that the there is a drilling process queue and a milling process queue both are first in first out ok and we are reporting statistics on both of them. So, the good thing about arena in this regard is the more keep on adding resources they will show up here as a list in this this particular part of the uh, software ok. Once again repeating when you have more than one process then the process is the variable the, now this this black arrow mark shows which process you have clicked. If you click this then the you can see the highlight moves to the appropriate process. So, if you have 10 processes there will be 10 rows of things right here which each process details shown here. So, that you can actually compare what type of processes you are doing and you can also look quickly into this because once you start building building complex models you will be using these uh, spreadsheet like view more common than looking at the model because sometimes the, this area this window might not be sufficient enough to look at the model. It might be so you might be doing something like this uh, you know scrolling here there to see the model completely in that regard ok. So, with that uh, what I will do now is I will um, let us now simulate the system for the time being ok. So, what I repeat to you once again is the parts arrival they arrive at uh, once in every 10 minutes. So, the drilling process is a, a value added process and uses one unit of a drilling machine and it is a constant and it takes 5 minutes to drill a hole value added. Then uh, is the milling process it uses a standard resource called milling machine one unit of the resource it is constant it takes 5 minutes to do this uh, do the drilling of the hole and it is a value added process and then the parts leave the system. So, it is a it is a quite of a simple of a model. Uh, so, that we can see how the uh, two machine system works ideally speaking. Then we go to the run and we go to the setup and we want to it is only one replication we want to run it for 8 hour shift which is 480 minutes and uh, we said after 480 minutes stop the simulation which will it will stop at the replication length ok and hit ok alright. And now what we do is we press the play button ok and you can see that parts run between the simulation is over hit yes ok and what we see now is the report is coming up and it shows 48 minutes 48 things came in. So, we look at the entity the value added time is 10 minutes exactly 10 minutes 5 plus 5 ok minimum value is 10 maximum value is 10 because it is all constant there is no variability. So, you will see that minimum maximum values are uh, exactly the same and if you look into it the number in is 49 parts arrived 48 left ok. So, one is on one of those machines we can see that even though we added one more of those uh, resource uh, it nothing has changed ideally. The waiting time in both there is absolutely nobody is in the queue there are two queues drilling process queue and milling process queue absolutely the average queue length is 0 minimum time in the queue is 0 maximum time in the queue is also 0. If we look at resource both the resource and now you can see a graph showing up in the report ok because there are two resources and both of them are utilized 50 percent of the time and this is not surprising because we know that uh, the blue is the billing, milling, drilling machine red is the milling machine and it is not surprising because the arrival time is 10 minutes and it takes 5 minutes to drill a hole and 5 minutes to mill, a, mill the uh, hole that was drilled. So, if that is the case then it is uh, 50 50 or 50 percent of the time both the machines are utilized ok. Now, with this 
you might have so now I know that the system is performing in the expected ranges uh, when there is no variability. Now, with that if that is the case then our uh, let us try to introduce a little bit of a variability in the system slight amount of variability. So, the time taken to uh, do the milling the average as of now we seen there is absolutely no queuing there, there is nobody in the queue no not a single of that n part waited in the queue. So, now the average time taken to mill is uh, let us say 5 minutes that is what we have been using here. Let us now make it as a slightly of a varying process ok slight amount of variation. So, I am going to say that the milling process uh, Q or the milling process time I am going to double click this and I am going to change this to uniform ok. I am going to say that the milling process time varies uh, following a uniform distribution between 4 and 6 ok. So, that means the minimum it will sometimes it will drill a hole in 4 minutes, sometimes it will drill a hole in 6 minutes, sometimes it will drill the hole in 5 minutes also. So, in the average the in, a, in a uniform distribution the average is calculated by minimum plus maximum divided by 2. So, you take the minimum value and sum it with the maximum value and then divided by 2 will give you the average. So, it is 4, 4 plus 6, 6 divided by 2 uh, sorry 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So, the average comes to exactly as that of the previous average which is 5 only that there is some variability. So, you have used a pro, un, pro, probability distribution or a some distribution to model a variability where the time is varying between 4 minutes to 6 minutes with an average of 5 minutes ok. We did that and we hit ok ok. So, now you can see that the drilling process is a medium the delay type is constant. So, means the time taken to drill is constant it is value added is minimum is 5 sorry there is no minimum and maximum the value is 5 because it is constant and in a milling process it is the other way around it is a uniform the slight amount of variability it is value added again the minimum is 4 and the maximum is 6 the average will be 5 then ok and we are reporting statistics of that and uh, we go to run set up and we look at the replication length the same exact all things nothing changes everything is ok and then let us run the simulation model ok. And we do that and we see the results ok. So, the system the total number of people out of the system is 48. So, looks like exactly the same, but here you will start seeing some slight amount of changes. Now, the value added time is no longer exactly the 10.000 it is 10.0556 and you see that the minimum value of 9.039 which used to be 10 and 10 in previous case you can now see that the minimum time varies between the time average time varies between or individual times varies between the value at a time varies between 9.03 minutes to 10.99 minutes ok. This is what we call as a physical observation of what a variability is all about where the we already introduced a variability into the milling machine time and you can see that the process times have a you know uh, vari variation in the system. So, now if you look into this the average the total time is uh, the 10.556 again what we saw that and then 49 parts arrived into the system at 48 left and work in process inventory is 1 point. So, there is some slight amount of inventory that you see minimum is 0, maximum is 2. So, if we look at queue ok, there is a still nobody is waiting in the queue, absolutely nobody waiting right. If you look at the resource utilization, we can see that the drilling machine is still utilized to 50 percent, the milling machine is slightly more than 50 percent ok, slightly more than 50 percent. And why? Because if you look at it, this queue, this this graph if you see the, it starts at 50 ok. So, milling machine is slightly more than the drilling machine purely because of the fact that the two reasons for this one is that uh, there is some amount of variability. So, it has been busy for slightly some more amount of time ok, but we have not done the simulation long enough to see anybody waiting in the queue it is only 480 minutes. So, will anybody wait in the queue for if you run the simulation for a long time period well let us see ok we can try that uh, let us do it. Let us go to run and set up 
and instead of an 8 hour shift for 480 minutes, let us run it for 4800 minutes. Okay. This might not be possible with your uh, software, the student version of the software, the free version. But let me show this to you uh, because I can, at least you should be able to see this okay, and see whether there is ever a queue that happens in the system. Okay. Now, you can see obviously it is going to take a longer time. Okay. The simulation is happening. Okay. 48 simulation is over. So, 479 parts more than 10 times of what we had seen earlier, it is out. Now, suddenly you see the half width value showing up. Previously, it was saying insufficient, insufficient. Now, you see half width values are 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.005, whatever it is. Okay. So, then if you look at the Q, there is absolutely no and then the half width, some of the half widths are insufficient and resource you will see that the drilling machine is utilized exactly 50 percent of the time and the milling machine is actually utilized 0.4995, it is not utilized fully is slightly less than 50 percent utilization that is because of the variability of the system as I said earlier. Now, you look at the graph there is this one is this is a mis misleading graph, but yes you can see that it is slightly small okay? that is all what it is 4.995 that is the idea here. So, what we are trying to do here is the half width now showed up. So, now what is this half width? So, half width is to an extent it is in a way uh, it calculates what is the um, this average okay? Nine, some for a given 95 percent of the time what will be the limits what will be the values within which this uh, average will be found that is what the half width to a large extent is being told. There is some there is a concept called confidence interval and half width is one the half of the width of the confidence interval is what we are talking about I mean, it is very very similar to that. So, here it is I think arena uses 95 percent I believe. Okay. So, now you can see that uh, uh, with a longer run when the system has a much longer time to perform then you have half width or in a way the system ran for a long time period or the sample size was large enough for the simulation to have enough confidence or enough data, enough sufficient data to give you that 95 percent of the time from the data I am confident that the mean the average will be between 9.9953 plus or minus 0.058232 whatever that value that is given. So, you are saying then in that regard is the mean will vary between 19 9.9953 the mean value at a time will vary between 9.9953 minus 0 0.0582 that will be the lower value and the higher value will be 9.9953 plus 0 0.05823 whatever it is how you round it off to whatever values. Okay. So, that one 95 percent of the time that is where you will find out is uh, find the average lying around is what the what the half width helps you to tell or it is in a way it will tell you with 95 percent of confidence what is the expected value of the mean time mean is the average we are talking average is called as the mean in this regard. Okay. So, now what happens is let me show to you guys a little bit of a difference since we already added little bit amount of variability in the system what happen if I make it 3 and 7. Okay. I increase the variability slightly it is still the average is 5 it is 3 plus 7 which is 10 divided by 2 it is 5 the average comes to 5, but the time can vary between 3 and 7 okay. uh, that is the only change I am doing and in one of the things that you need to do in simulation study is always ensure that your study follows a step by step process you do not randomly keep on changing things all over the place. Uh, this kind of thing where you slightly change things at uh, uh, one step at a time and then study the behavior of the system. What I am now doing is I am actually doing experiment with the simulation model. This is called experimentation. Okay. So, you, you set up a model you see ensure that the model behaves as expected without any variability and slowly introduce variability one after another to see how the system behaves, how the system works. And then study the understand the behave process of the system 
okay, and then go from there. So, now you can see that I changed the milling process mean time from uh, 4 and 6 to 3 and 7. So, I have introduced more variability into the system. I have not changed with the means, but I have introduced more variability into the system. Okay. So, now with this now I go to run setup, I do not want to run it to 4800 minutes, I just run only it to 480 minutes. So, that you can uh, you can also replicate this with your system. I press this and it runs okay. and say simulation has run to completion, we are like to see the results. The number out is 48 okay. and let us see what happens. Now, the value added time, the average time you can see has increased 10.111. Okay. The minimum value is 8.01 and the maximum value is 11.98. So, the time variability varies now between 8 to 12 okay. and you can see the half width is now insufficient and the minute I changes this to you know before that let us look at the queue. Nobody was still waiting in the queue, everybody there is no queuing happening at this point at all and the resource utilization if you look into it milling machine was slightly more utilized compared to the uh, drilling machine. So, I just wanted to show you the half width now showing up the minute I change the uh, run time to 4800 minutes. Okay. So, apply ok and we run the simulation model okay. and let us see whether there is ever any queue showing up probably not. Okay. It is take a little bit of time to finish the simulation because it is a uh, okay, simulation has finished and 479 as expected okay. and if you look into it the average value added time is now 0 0.9906 very close to 10 and half width you can see a half width value has shown up. This half width was larger than the previous half width uh, which was 0 0.005 was the previous half width when I did it, it did the um, uh, variation was between 4 and 6. Now, I made between 3 and uh, 7 and you can see that the half width has increased. Okay. But you can also see that since I ran the model for a longer time period then what did I what happened? I had more entities instead of the 48 entities there are 481 entities that came into the system. So, when you have larger number of entities or larger the sample size then you have sufficient enough confidence to uh, create the confidence interval where you are basically saying that uh, you are I can tell you with 95 percent confidence that the value added time the average of the value added time which is 99.991 or 99.9906 round it off to 99.9991 will vary between 99.9906 6 plus or minus 0.1165 okay 95 percent of the time the values will lie between that limits that is what the half width is trying to tell you and you look at the queue still there is no queue look at the resources you can see that uh, drilling machine is utilized 50 percent of the time and milling machine is only utilized 40 percent 49 percent of the time slightly because of the fact that the uh, drilling machine the milling machine has more variability in the system. Okay. Now, that we have played with only one machine where there is variability and the other guy is basically uh, being a constant. So, now let us see whether if we change the drilling process let us introduce variability into the drilling process. Instead of the constant let us put uniform here again and in uniform I am going to make it as the uh, 4 and 6 okay. same as that of previously. 4 and 6. There is some variability in system. Hit OK. Okay. So, now immediately you see that the delay type is uniform 4 and 6. This case also is uniform 7 and 3. Okay. But the only thing is that both of them have the same average, but except that the minimum and value maximum values are different. And let me go back to the setup and make it into 480 minutes, not 4800, so that you can also run and see this results for yourself. And I hit the play button. Okay. Simulation has finished. Okay. Number out 48. Okay. So, now you see that the value added time uh -huh, is changed 10.16 and the minimum and maximum values 
has now become 7.7 .7 to 12.54 okay the half width is insufficient okay but 49 entities came in and 48 went out of the system and let us look at the queue okay absolutely there is nobody still in the queue that is because there is still every 10 minutes the parts are arriving there is no variability to the arrival yet okay and you can see that the utilization of this but this is for only for an 8 hour shift and it is a cardinal sin to make any conclusion from the simulation model uh, or the simulation uh, by um, uh, running a small study. So, what we do is we go back and we run it to 4800 minutes which you guys might not be able to run because of the uh, unlicensed version that you guys have. You might be able to run up to 1000 minutes and uh, we are looking into this and let us see how it actually works. Okay. Mm, simulation is running okay. and the zeros at the bottom which say shows you what it is the, the status of the machine is. Okay. So, I will get back to that later the numbers come now to be exactly the same, but now you can see that it is 9.9968 and half width values are slightly changed but you can see the minimum and maximum values and you have seen now the half width values which were earlier not there. So, now when you run it for a larger time period when you have 481 observations or entities that has went into the system you can basically say you can tell that okay fine I have sufficient confidence to tell you what is going to happen with the entities uh, or with the I can tell you how much of with 95 percent confidence what will be the average value added time this is exactly what the value v at time value added time of the entity. If you look at the resource you can see that both of, both of the resource utilization has come down to below 0.5 that is because of the variability in the system and because of that you can actually say that still okay if you look at the entity uh, the the time busy there because of the variability you can see that some point of time there will be you know some uh, reduced utilization because sometimes you are not really operating at uh, 5 you are actually operating at 4. So, some might sometime you might be slightly free depending upon the time that you have calculated okay. With that now let us get back into so now we introduced some variability. So, let us see whether the drilling process also behaves exactly the same how does that happen okay. So, I go to drilling process and I change this to 3 and 7 exactly that are sort of the, uh, the other case okay. So, these processes are exactly the same now same variability except that they are one after the another okay and we go to the setup and we run it for only 480 minutes okay apply so that you can also simulate the system we run it and we look at the results. Now surprisingly the number out is no longer 48 it is 47 one entity less the value added time you can see that now this is the variability of the system has picked up drastically and you, you still there is no queuing, but the resource both of them okay, uh, are showing more than 50 percent utilization that is because of the V8 ways these time values are picked up okay, that is because of the variability. Okay. So, uh, if you run it for 4800 minutes the half width will show up okay, as I said earlier and we might be able to come up with the long term behavior this kind of longer simulation studies are called as the long term behavior of the system all right ok. So, uh, still the arrivals are very constant there is no variability in the arrival of the system ok. So, it is getting very close to 4800 minutes pretty soon it will be over ok simulation is over all right and uh, 479 is the average entity uh, you can see that it is now 6 and 6.28 and 13.66 is the minimum and maximum value of value added times and average is this much here you are given a half width which is slightly more than what the values that you have seen and you see now you see that there is a very 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 small average in the milling process queue that means 0 0.0002 okay, the waiting time about uh, uh, very small fraction of a time somebody waited in the queue this actually means that at some point of time when a part arrived it saw the milling machine busy and it ended up waiting in the queue. So, you can now see that now that when there is large amount of variability in the system queuing can happen. So, the first 
evidence of a Q. The minute you see a Q in the system, one of the first reasons that you should be worried about, you should be thinking about is to quantify the variability of the system. Okay? Because one of the factors, major factors that will result in queuing is the extreme amount of variability. Okay? With that, now let us go back to the simulation process again. Let us close this report. And now we have made both of these guys models are 3 and 7 varying and stuff like that. Now I want to go back, I am going to change them to constant again, value added of 5 mean. This also is goes back to constant, mean value of 5, okay. absolutely no changes, 5, 5 and other things and go to the arrival. And here what I am going to do is I am going to change the arrival to a different process. Okay. So instead of the constant, I am going to make the arrival variable arrival, extremely random arrival, I have no control over this. Okay. So I am going to take the random arrival, make it as random and the value remains it as 10. I am not going to change the value at all, it just remains as 10. So from the constant 10, I am making it as a random or it is a random process means an exponential time between arrivals. The time between arrivals follow exponential distribution or the arrivals themselves will follow a process called the Poisson process. Is some people call it as Poisson. Okay, Poisson process. We will see what Poisson process is in the next class for the probability and statistics aspects of it. This is why probability and statistics is important for simulation because you use it quite a lot in modeling the behavior of the system. So with that we now go back and we see and hit OK and everything else only the arrival is exponential with 10 minutes the mean did not change from constant it has become a random process. Drilling is a constant process with 5, milling is a constant process with 5, everything else remains the same. I go to run control, I set up and instead of the 4800 minutes, I hit 480 minutes, apply so that you can also do this and run the simulation. And you can see that some queuing definitely has happened. Now the number out which we were playing around in 49, 47 and those kind of numbers, there is only 39 of them that actually has come out. So the throughput, the productivity of the system, which used to be 40, when a constant arrival happened, uh, which was at 47 uh, this time pre previously, it has now come down to 39. So, if you look into it, the value added time is 10, minimum and maximum is 10. If you look into it, you will see some values where that used to be earlier 0, 0, 0, you will see wait time now showing up. The value of wait time shows us 2.37 minutes. And at one point of time, we can see that the maximum value of wait time is 16 minutes. Okay. What is going on? So the total time in the system, the average is 12 minutes, 10 minutes of value added time and 2 minutes of wait time. These two put together, the VA time and the wait time summed together gives you the average total time in the system. And you can see that the minimum value of the time in the system is 10, whereas the maximum value is 26.1265, which is this maximum value summed by this particular maximum value. So the total time in the system in an entity, this is the time I am trying to talk to you, what we calculated the total time earlier, which is the sum of the value added time and the wait time. So average value added time plus average wait time gives you the average total time in system. Maximum value of value added time and maximum value of wait time summed together will give you the maximum value of the value added time in this particular system. And you can see that 40 parts, only 40 parts arrived. Instead of the 48 parts, only 40 arrived and 39 were finished. Okay. And if you look at the queue, you can see that the drilling process queue, surprisingly, average waiting time is 2.31 minutes and minimum value is 0, maximum value is 16. How is this even possible? Whereas the milling process, there is no queue, absolutely no queue. Okay. And number waiting is 0 0.19, like sometimes there is 4 people waiting in the queue. And if you look at the utilization of the resource, drilling machine is utilized 41 percent of the time, milling machine is utilized 40 percent of the time. The utilization has come down drastically, which used to be 50 percent, 50 percent utilization. There is about 10 percent, 9 to 10 percent reduction in the utilization. How is this possible? What is going on? So maybe the, we might made some mistake in the model. So let us try running it for 480 minutes, sorry 4800 minutes, a long time simulation and see whether it is a small phenomena or is it actually a serious phenomena. 
So, we will run the simulation and you can see that in this simulation itself we will see queuing happening here. This particular place you can see parts queuing up okay? whereas there is still no queue in the milling process. Okay? And we are running it for 4800 years and if you look into it the one that used to be 479 parts that used to be out in the earlier system we are only getting 459 about a reduction of 20 parts uh, are going on here. If you look at the entity you can see that the value added time average is 10, minimum value is 10, maximum value is 10, the wait time is 2.29 minutes, minimum is 0, maximum is 17. You can see that these simulations results kind of you know somehow call and here you will see the total time okay. It says 12.2962 okay that is the average which is the sum of this 10 plus 2 okay then the maximum minimum value is this uh, the minimum value of value added time minimum value of wait time and maximum value of wait uh, value added time and maximum value of wait time sum together will give you this and you see there is a term called correlated return here half width correlated okay correlation is a situation where where the effect of two variables or two aspects cannot be separated out Okay, they are related related to one another. So, when we say the half width is correlated which means because of what is going on in the drilling machine okay, the things that are happening in the milling machine is also correlated with that okay. or, or in another way to say it is because there is a crazy randomness in the arrival process uh, that randomness results in the behavior of the waiting time and all those aspects of it. So, this correlated means there is an impact or a, some evidence of correlation going on due to something. Okay. So, let us see what this correlation is all about. What happens here is if you look into this what I have done is I have not done anything else I kept all the variability to be the same and what I did is I introduced uncertainty into the system the randomness into the system and you can see that what how I introduced uncertainty into the system. I introduced uncertainty by changing the arrival time arrival processes into a Poisson process okay that is all I ended up doing. The minute I did that what happened was the system behaved drastically. When I introduced variability I can see that the behavior of the system was uh, nasty but still I could get things to work okay. Now that this now that when you look into this you can see that it is not exactly the same because the randomness, the uncertainty that is put in with the unpredictability that is put into the system is way much more crazier than the uncertainty or the variability that I put it into the by into the two process by varying that processing time using a uniform distribution. So, this is the reason why we use probability and statistics to study the system purely because of the fact that when you have a system like this where an arrival happens it goes to a drilling then a milling and a parts leave this is what we call as a uh, you know um, uh, it, it can be a uh, like simple example this kind of systems are called as flow shop systems because all parts flow follow the same uh, loop or same uh, path. So, as a flow, flow shop ideally parts arrive then go to the drilling milling and then leaves the system. So, here you can see that when I change these two to uniform distribution both of them uh, I even varied the processing time largely and I was able to see some slight amount of queuing going on where the parts arrival was made as the uh, it was constant. Then I made these guys as constant and I made this as the arrival as a random process. I introduced uncertainty into the system and the system became crazy. Now before I uh, stop what I will do now is I will introduce the same instead of the constant I introduce the uniform 3 and 7 into both cases ok. I am doing is I am doing the uniform 3 and 7. So, now what I have is I have both uncertainty and variability in the system now. I have introduced uncertainty the arrival using the random process and variability is introduced into the processes by changing the process times from constant to a probability distribution. I go to the run setup I run it only for 480 minutes so that you can also run it on your uh, run it on your uh, student evaluation version. Uh, we run it and we see the we see what the result is and now all of a sudden you can see that it has now come down further to 35 ok. It used to be 39 earlier now it has come down to 35. 
you can see that the minimum and maximum values the value order time is now changed minimum is 6.65 maximum is 13 ok. Now, earlier it used to be 10 and 10 now it is drastically changed. The wait time has slightly reduced, but you can see that the total time in the system has actually uh, in increased in this case 35 entities arrived and 35 were processed. The queue you can see that both of them there was some slight amount of queuing actually is going on in this regard and the resource utilization you can see they have now come down drastically. So, now before making any conclusion let us run the system for 4800 minutes or a longer time period ok. So, that we have uh, uh, much more larger sample size and the system is more confident of giving us the behavior of the system and let us see how the queuing and you can see that some amount of queuing is happening on both the systems at this time period and let us wait for the system or simulation to complete. Okay. And you can see that the values has further come down 454. Okay. So, if you look into the entity the value added time it is 9.8 minutes and the half width is now shown up okay. and the minimum and maximum values there is no correlated return at this point because one of the reason is that uh, the half width are calculated properly because there is variability. So, what happens is one, one of the queuing will actually break the impact of the arrival process into the system. So, there is they have, there is not much evidence of the correlation and you can see that the total time in the system is now 12 minutes a larger time value with a minimum between 6 and this one and uh, you can also see that the there is queuing going on in both cases ok. In the drilling process the queue the there is a scenario you will see that there are 23 parts that were on an average sorry not 23 parts 23 minutes the system one part weighted in the system and you can see that the number weighting the minimum value is 0 and maximum value is 6 at some point of time there are 6 entities that were waiting in the drilling queue whereas, in the milling queue only 2 entities were waiting on an average ok. And if you look at the resource utilizations you can say that these resource utilizations are which were shown as 39 or something in 480 has now stabilized to 46 percentage on an average. So, ideally the average time uh, it, it the mean time is 50, the expected time is uh, 5 minutes which means uh, the other one is 10. So, you are supposed to have the resource being utilized for 50 percent of the time, but you are only seeing it them utilized for 46 percent of the time and this is one reason one of the examples of what is variability does to the system. Uncertainty and variability together to a large extent do reduce your productivity from what is expected out of it. Your expected productivity was both the machines to be busy for 50 percent of the time and slowly and sadly in this regard you can see that it is not 50 it is only 46 percent of the time 4 percent reduction in the utilization of the machine is being seen purely because of the variability in the system ok. So, with this what I will do today is that I will call this as a, a good enough session for you guys to model or how to use uh, arena based simulation models or simulation software to build models and use those models to conduct systematic experiments with the system. So, that you can understand the behavior of the system unless you build a model like this and play around with it and step by step change the aspects of the system and try to correlate what is going on the behavior analyze the behavior of the system and try to introduce your hypothesis and check it with the data. Only then you will be able to understand the inherent behavior of the system, the inherent aspects of the system and slowly you will it will be clear in your mind how uncertainty and how variability together results in the system changes the system behavior. What happens if there is only variability and no uncertainty? What happens if there is only uncertainty no variability? What happens when both of them come together? And now, it you will be able to appreciate the need of probability in statistics because you know now know that both uncertainty and variability put together is one of the biggest enemies of your uh, uh, of reaching the expected productivity and your productivity actually reduces. So, that is one of the reasons why people do lot of uh, uh, practices in industry to reduce variability and reduce uncertainty. So, that the productivity of the system is high and you can get maximum value for the money that you are invested in the business ok. Thank you for your patient listening and we will meet uh, 
again later with the more concepts of probability and statistics. Thank you.